Welcome back to the Baseball Podcast. We have a very special guest today. Okay. Today, you will be taking, with your hosts, an art class on air. Because we are having your friend and ours, friend of the podcast, Andy Brown. And um, what does Andy Brown do, Ethan? Why don't you why don't you tell people a little bit about their teacher for for tonight? So as we get into in the interview, I thought Andy Brown just went around and painted baseball stadiums, which he does. But he does so much more than right. that. He paints just baseball culture, people playing baseball in the streets. He paints announcers. He paints all these different things. And he's gone to I think he said fifteen different countries and painted, uh, you know, baseball scenes basically. And he mm-hmm. he got he gets into all the nuances of the different things that he paints all the time. And which was very helpful for me because I don't know anything about art. And I figure you show up, you paint the stadium and you leave, but there's a lot more to it. And so I want to thank Andy for explaining all of that to me and hopefully everybody else listening, because there's a lot more to it that I, that I I just had no idea. So it really was a learning experience, but that's what Andy does. He's a baseball painter. I'll leave it at that. And he's also the official painter of um, team great Britain. So we get into the world baseball classic and the growth of, team great britain so that was a lot of fun it's a long interview so let's just head it right into it Tom. that's right before we kick it off i do want to ask how much time do you have andy i don't want to monopolize your whole night as long as as long as you as long as you've got i know it's later for you than it is for me i'm, I'm mm. good for however long i'm you thinking want i'm thinking like six hours you got enough you got yeah, that? yeah how's that you know <laughs> what okay <laughs> no like... kidding i did have an interview wow this is during covid or this is a couple of years, maybe a year or two ago I had an interview, and I think it, it did go on for about six hours. We did it in two parts. Oh, yeah, this, I'm not this, doing this, that. this. No, no, no. It was, it was. No. I think, I think to be honest, we got, to, we got talking about like everything, and it ended up being like the whole day was this interview. But it wasn't quite the interview. By the end, we were chatting about God knows what. But it was a long, yeah. it was a long. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for coming yeah. on. What's the meaning of life, Andy? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why don't we start at oh, the we, beginning? You know. We read, we read all the Harry Potter books, and then we, and then yeah. we moved on. Yeah, so yeah. You're it was really a like, long well, for God so loved the world. Um, right. No, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. But thank you for coming on. You've been oh, extremely you. nice. I have to be honest with you. I don't know that much about you, which I think should make it fun. Like I, you know, followed you. I saw your artwork and stuff. And then, um, yeah, who was it that turned me on? Oh, it was Phil Seelig, the Cuba dugout guy. Yeah, Ooh, right. saying, yeah, yeah, Phil. He brought you up, and he was like, you know, Andy Brown. He's the painter. You should have him on. He's really nice. And I was like, okay. And then I kind of that like popped into my head the other day. I was like, oh yeah, I should do that. And so I hit you up, yeah. and you were very nice which i'm yeah you know, oh, great I, which I i'm surprised it. by um, well yeah i know the reputation is country out here yeah. you know, no pe- <laughs> people have been super nice actually nobody's been a jerk i've just gotten a few like not responses which mm. i don't blame anybody at all <laughs> no, right. no, 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 no and we yeah, are no, currently it's... on a british commonwealth wealth arc on the podcast so welcome yeah, we to are. the arc we've had, had a, a run on, of you? We've had a run yeah, we, of people from the Commonwealth. So. Yeah, we yeah. had we had Russell on. We had a guy named Gabriel Rincones, who's a Scottish yeah, yeah, guy yeah, on the Phillies okay, draft. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we had uh, yeah, we're having Donovan Benoit, who was on the team yeah, this yeah, past yeah. WBC. He's uh, yeah. I think two weeks from now we're interviewing him. So yeah, I don't. It kind of just fell out together that way. But yeah, we're on yeah. A, a, an England kick. Which is you know cool, the baseball so. the baseball world is a very small one, and um, yeah. Yeah. you know I was at the European Championships with. Gabe at the at, in Italy that was 2021 I was like the artist in residence for the team the team artist so that was fantastic and that was like during the it was like the COVID bubble kind of it was just still happening it was still COVID you still had to it was the first time I got out of the UK for, for a while and um so we couldn't really leave the hotel so it ended up that I was with the whole team for the whole we had a week of training and the week of the games and so I was like embedded with the team for two weeks and I was like this is completely unique like no, this will never happen again where a sports team are like or hopefully not happen again, where the sports team right, held yeah. captive in a in a hotel. They were training. We could go to the practice field, but at very allotted times. But then the rest of the time, they were training in the car park. You know, they were throwing, like they were doing their, their workouts in the car park next to all the cars and stuff. And I was there drawing them and sketching them. So it was a great way to really get to know the guys and really be embedded with them. And then Donovan, I was with in Regensburg at the WBC qualifiers back there again mm. last year. So that was, it was, uh, yeah, it's a small old world, the, the baseball world. You bump into people who know people. And all people you've met along the way somewhere all the time. It is, yeah. And pe- people have been super nice. Um, I'm probably just going to leave in from where we started recording because it's all been good stuff that you have to say. But mm-hmm. a-, a little bit of a delayed intro. Why don't you tell us about yourself, Andy, who you are and what you do? Right. I'm Andy Brown. I'm a British guy. I started painting baseball. I, w- oh, I first went to see baseball in 2009. I moved to South Korea. And an American friend of mine said to me, hey, why don't you come along to a 
football game. And I'd never been to a baseball game before in my life. But, you know, I knew about baseball, um, seen it in the films, uh, you know, probably seen a little bit of it here and there, but not really, didn't really know anything about it. But I thought, oh, yeah, that'd be great. Let's go. And it was in Busan, South Korea, a city on the south. I was, I was teaching art over there at the time and um, went to the ballpark and had a great time. And from there on, I would, I'd always have a sketchbook with me. So I'd start making little sketches of the, of the ballpark. You know, of course, every ballpark's different. And I realized that in a, in a ballpark, especially in Korea, or it struck me first in Korea, is that in Korea, it's, it's quite a conservative country. It's quite, that people are quite conservative. And um, when you go to the ballpark, you can see everything about a culture. Within a game, you hear the music, you smell the food, you taste the food, you see how people celebrate, you see how people commiserate. You see the surroundings of the ballpark. So you might see a Buddhist temple over there. In Japan, you might see a Shinto temple. In Korea, you also see a lot of crucifixes. Where I am in Tijuana at the moment, on the back of the mountain over here in the painting, they've got a cross on the top of the on the top of the, the mountain there. So you can learn about the religion, you can learn about the politics, you can learn about the economics. Um, you can learn a hell of a lot about a country in a ballpark. So in Korea, I first realized that and I started going around and I was, I was going to the different cities and I thought, okay, you go to different cities, you can find out a little bit more about the culture and how people are there. And I was making these little drawings and I made these little drawings and it was just like the way to pass the time before the game started. But also it became like a collection of, um, I guess, my memories, where I've been, what I've been up to, who I was with, what was happening in the news at the time, little notes and all that. So it became like a little visual diary. And then, and then, of course, I found out, you know, they play baseball in Japan. So I used to go to Japan. I thought, okay, I want to go to a few stadiums over there. And Japan, the musical instruments, people play are different in the crowds. The kind of chants are different. In Korea, it's more like a K-pop concert. In Japan, it's much more... I always thought it was much more like a, a football stadium kind of thing. They're a bit more regimented, um, cheering, a bit more regimented in the songs. Um, a lot more a lot more trombones, I noticed. So um, that was interesting. And it was just it was just kind of different, you know? So... So then I, was, then I was painting Japan baseball stadiums. And then, so during the game, I'll be sat in the the bleachers or wherever I had my ticket and I'd make a painting of the game. And it just just ended up being what I do. It ended up that I did that for well, quite, quite a few years. And I went all around Korea, Japan, Taiwan, uh, did a few in the States. And then it got to a point where I thought, you know what, I want to, you know, I've done most of Asia. I've done a lot of the ballparks in Asia. And I thought, okay, well, now it's time to quit my job and go and um, paint all the all 30 MLB. So I did that, quit my job in 2019. And then I um, went over to the States, painted all all 30 MLB ballparks in the 2019 series, a uh, season, sorry. And then um, and then after that, I ended up in Mexico and then Cuba and then Nicaragua and all sorts of places. So I've been all around the world doing it now. So I've been 15 different countries um, and they're, they're paintings like these. There's this one behind me here. This is in, I'm in Mexico at the moment in Tijuana. Um, the Toros, the Tijuana here on the border, and so I'll I'll be stood somewhere or sat somewhere in the stadium, and as I look out from my view, I try to capture everything about it. I try to capture the the the, the mascots in the crowd here. I'm in the crowd there at the bottom. The beer vendors down there. We've got all our fans. People I meet, people I hang out with, will we'll turn up in the crowd. And then of course we've got the players and the action on the field. But then we've got our surroundings. Like I say, in the surroundings you can tell more about a culture, more about a place, more about a society. And that's always been the um, the interest to me has been the, um, yeah, the culture of baseball, really, the culture of worldwide baseball and how it changes from place to place. The music changes, the food changes. Even I noticed in Japan and, and Korea and places like that, how far the umpire will stand behind the, the battle will change. Like, I feel like in, um, in, in especially in, in and, and even the way the players play the game, but, the, the umpires tend to stand close or they'll have, may say sometimes put their, their hand on the shoulder of the catcher more in Cuba, more in the Dominican Republic, more in the States. Whereas in Japan and, and Korea, I always thought that the, the umpires stood a little bit further back to respect personal space. So I always found it just really interesting. All these tiny little tiny, tiny little things, it's the same game, but it's um, it's always different everywhere you go. And it's, like I say, it's taken me all around the world, 15 different countries now, painting baseball, I think I've done about 120. I don't really know. I always, now I say 120 because I did about, I was up to about 90. I was, up, I was up to about 90 after the MLB. I did all 30 in the MLB. So I've done a fair few countries since then. So I reckon I'm about 120. I I have so many questions now. So, <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. That's is, what we're here for. So we this might, is, we so, might be six hours. Who knows? Let's yeah, see. yeah. We might yeah. be six hours. So I guess, first of all, I want to know, 
I think you might have touched on it a little bit. How did it start? Was it <clears throat> you just brought like a sketchbook or something to a stadium yeah. and started doing it on your own? And then we're yeah. like, oh, maybe I can make something out of this. Yeah, it was just it was just curiosity. It was my way to learn about the culture that I was living in in, in South Korea. It was my way to understand the people and the history of the place. And it was just, but also it was, it was my way of understanding baseball, learning about baseball because, you know, there was the thing of, you know, you didn't, I didn't, I didn't know the positions, I didn't know the the positions on the field, I didn't understand many of the rules to begin with. And, you know, it's just my way of understanding, okay, that's first base and that's second base and this is where the shortstop is. And, but then it was almost things like the, the, the arc of the ball. You get that thing where somebody hits it and then everyone starts cheering. You're like, no, it's never a home run. You know, it's going to yeah. go straight through. Yeah. It's going to center field. But you don't realize that. You learn that. That becomes, that's over, over a while. You can hear it. You can see it. You can see the arc of the ball. So it was always, for me, it was just a way of knowing all these things and learning all of these things and, um, and just recording all those differences that I found in different places. I always think that like in um, one of the most interesting moments I had was in Cuba where I looked out around the stadium and I remember there was there was nobody in the stadium was wearing, wearing any merchandise. There was no, you know, there was no Nike t-shirts, there was no Reebok, there was no Adidas, whatever. But there was no Dodgers shirts, there was no no team shirts, no merchandise at all. But So everybody, you know, there was no merchandise. You couldn't buy merchandise. But also when you looked out around the fences, there wasn't adverts for Visa, Delta, whatever. There was adverts for Patrismo and Comunidad. And there was uh, Julio the 26th, the 26th of July, I think it was when the revolution was. And all these sorts of things. So you've got that, you've got a, a message, a different sort of message being put across within the stadium, whereas in the, you know, in the States and most countries, you'll have more the important telecom companies, the important credit card people. Uh, you know, the big corporations. So I feel, I feel like, again, all of those little nuances within a ballpark are, are stunning to me and fascinating. And I always, you know, it never, it never fails to amaze me those little beautiful, beautiful things you can see. So is this something that you do in like regular life? Like you went around and you sort of found yourself painting the world or did you specifically say, is, I'm going to a game, I'm going to paint it? Um, I would always, I mean, I, I, was, I taught art 15 years. I did five years in England and I did... Um, 10 years over in South Korea teaching art. So I was always painting, always drawing. So I, I feel like I was always an artist. Um, and then it, it just became the baseball game, I think. And it would be that, you know, I'd go to Hiroshima to see the carp in Hiroshima. And, you know, I'd go and I'd paint the sites and paint the, the, the where the, the atom bomb dropped and the, the church that's also the public building that's still there in ruins. And so I'd paint a picture of that. And then in the afternoon, I'd go to the game and paint the game. But the, the main purpose of those trips was to paint the baseball stadiums. But I also like to document the places that I go to, the culture that I'm in. So it might be I go to, a, you know, the local town square or the local, the food or the, you know, a, a policeman on the street or whoever's around, you know, do a portrait of them and then on my way to the game and, so it was, it was really just my own curiosity, my own interest to begin with. And I just, in, you know, it's just my love of baseball, just watching the game, learning about the game. Um, but by about 2018, I was in Taiwan doing the, I was painting the stadiums there. And then I remember I met somebody from the league there and they said, oh, if you want, you can come back to the, the championships. We've got the championships in a few, few weeks time, just so I can have a holiday. I said, yeah, that'd be great. So I came, went back. And it was at that point that I started to meet more players and I was selling a few pieces to players. Um, I think it was that year, 2018, I did a painting of um, Tony Watson. I did, I did all the all the, the winning pictures from the, was it 2017? Maybe it was 2017. I did the winning pictures from the Dodgers and um, Astros World Series. That was 2017, right? Yeah, infamous. Yeah. 2017. So yeah. I did, so that was the, yeah, that was that, right, that one, right? So I did all the, the winning pictures. So I painted every winning picture. This was, I was on holiday at the time, so I wasn't at the stadium, but I did these portraits of all the players. And then I remember like in that, at that time, I got a mass message from Justin Turner one day. He said, hey, my friend Anthony Watson, seeing your painting of him, it'd be interested in buying it. Can you buy it? And I was like, yeah, of course you can. That's great. So it started to become that the players were noticing what I was doing in Korea. Some of the players were buying prints of what I was doing. And, you know, I had little trades with players. It'd be like, okay, they were like, hey, can I get a copy of your painting? Yeah, I can do your print. You give me a sign ball and some batting gloves. And okay, so they do that to sign some bits and we'd have a little trade. And that was great. So it was just my reputation got bigger. And um, I just thought I just got to the point where I was like, okay, this is this is really become a, it's kind kind of becoming a thing, and I'm, I loved it. And I was like, you know what? Let's 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 go and paint all thirty in the states, and then and then see where we end up after that. I thought I might end up back in a classroom, but so far I've not gone back to a, a regular job. I've managed to keep keep the wheel spinning just about. Yeah, I like that you just went for broke. You were like, listen, 
I think I can make something of this. So you just did it. You know, I'm, you, I'm sure it, it to... took a little more soul searching than that, but a lot of people would have been like, come on, come on. You got a steady job. No, you know? no, no, no. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't as the weird or the, the thing that's always been, and it's just been, to be honest, it's been amazing. The, the last four or five years of my life, the things that have happened, the people I've met, the place I've been have just been incredible. And every, like, even when, even when it got to the point of making that decision to leave mine, it was a very steady job and I had a nice apartment and I was getting paid fine. It was, it was great. But I got to the point, I was like, life was just leading me in a different direction. And I've always felt, I always feel like I've been pretty good or reckless, stupid, whatever you want to call it. Just seeing, okay, this is where the lights are shining. We're going to go that way now. And that's what you do. You, you you follow the lights and you see what happens. And even with like, it's been, it's certainly not been easy. It's been like the, you know, I thought it was going to be three months and then I'm in Cuba, Mexico, wherever else. And it just carried on. But then you get to COVID and it's like, oh my God, what am I going to do now? The stadiums are locked down, you know, there's nothing going on. Um, what happens? What do I do? Um, so, so it has had its real hard moments and still, to be honest, day to day, it's, it's a, uh, you know, I, I've been, I'm completely reliant on making sales and, and selling my work. So it's, uh, I have a patron, so people, if I can get that plug, people can get on my patron. Go ahead, plug, plug whatever you like. Um, yeah, Andy Brown is an artist on Patreon, please. Anything. Like, I remember my first, I've only got two patrons, to be honest, but I, and I desperately need more. Um, <laughs> but the first, the first person who became my patron, it was absolutely amazing feeling. And I'm so, it's Carrie in, uh, I think he's in, where is he? In Texas. Gentleman called Carrie. And, I think it's five dollars a month, but just that little bit of belief of somebody believing you in us saying, "Yep, five dollars a month." I buy your coffee every month. I was like, it made my day, it, or made my made my world, to be honest. And it's there's always been those little things where it's just been something happens every time there's a doubt, and I think, "Oh my god, what am I doing? Like, where am I going to go next? Like, how am I going to pay the rent or whatever?" Something comes along, something happens, we get to the next stage, and it's just like, "Okay, right, I guess I'm going for another." Another month, another six weeks, another three months. Who knows? And then you just get on with that, and then you, you just, you, like I say, you keep the keep the wheel spinning as long as possible. Yeah, was, this is fascinating to me. So, are you at the point now? Because you said, you know, okay, I'm going to go to this stadium. Now I'm going to go to this stadium. Are you yeah. now being contacted by teams to say, hey, can you come paint our ballpark? Or are you still deciding your own itinerary? It's it varies. It's mixed. Um, I would say most of the time. The thing, so so at the moment, I've, I've got this residence who were the Toros here in Tijuana. And um, this was the first Mexican ballpark I came to in 2019. I was in San Diego, going to be in San Diego. And one of the owners got in touch with me and said, hey, if you're going to be in San Diego, why, why don't you come be our guest for a couple of nights in, in Tijuana? And I was like, I've never been to Mexico. Why not? Let's check it out. So came over. It was absolutely amazing. And, um, and that was kind of it. I never thought too much more about it, I guess. And then... Um, it just so happened that this year I had an exhibition or just I've just had an exhibition here in Tijuana at the Casa de Cultura and um, they had an exhibition of um, a number of my pieces of work or prints of my work and it just it, it started to be talked about about two years ago this exhibition it's just been a slow progress of coming together coming together coming together and it just so happened okay it's going to be in May we're going to have it okay great so I said okay I'll, I'll come over for the exhibition I'm li I live in the Dominican Republic at the moment so right. I came over for the exhibition. As I was coming over, I thought, you know what? I'll just get in touch with the Toros and say, look, I'm going to be in Tijuana. How about I be your artist for the next month or six weeks or so? And I'll paint, you know, all your games and your players and portraits and uh, practice and all the rest of it. And, uh, and they said, yeah. So I was like, okay, great. So I'm, I'm here and then I'm here for all the home games. I'm with the team. And, you know, I'm doing things. This is kind of, this is a study of, this is the BP. So I'll be there at BP making a study from the side. I don't know how well you can, how clear that is, but hopefully yeah, no, that looks great. Enough. So I'll be doing things like that. And then like, this is Tony Torres, fantastic Mexican name in this, and the grounds crew doing the mound before the start of the game. So you've got those beautiful mountains in the back there. That's their rake in front. They've got their hose in their hands, as it were. Not a euphemism. And, uh, <laughs> and all that stuff. So, so there's, there's all that. And then look, we've got, and then there you go, batting cage, back to the batting cage. I think, you know, I've kind of become obsessed this last week. I've kind of got obsessed with the batting cage. I've always been quite fascinated with it. But certainly in the last, the last week, I've really been painting the batting cage. And, you know, to me, it's the, it's the place where the game's won and lost. You know, you see the manager, Homer, having a chat to the guys and little corrections being made, swings. And mm -hmm. I just love how, like, all those, all those important conversations just happening around the batting cage and just really... You know, I remember there was there was one the other day where I saw Grazza, the one of the catchers for the team. He took a few swings, 
he comes out the cage and one of the guys had a chat to him, just just a little kind of little little tweak on his swing, I think. And then that night, of course, he hit a home run. I was like, there you go, that's that's the batting cage. Like that's that's yep. what happens. And again, you know, there's another one there. So I so I'll, I'll be with the team during the day. I get there early at the ballpark. And, you know, I'm pretty free to roam wherever I want. So I, I roam around and I, I make these drawings and make these make these paintings. Um, and then in the night, I, I paint the game. So, you know, there's a day game there. And then next to me over here, I've got a, a whole stack of canvases. Let me hold this one. I don't know where you can see that because I can't see it anymore. But anyway, there's no, the yeah. game from yeah. just the other night, looking back towards the, towards the mounds. So I'll be there, set up somewhere in the stadium, painting the painting the game in the nine innings. My my aim is always well, it's not always it, it is like I start generally when the game starts first first pitch right I'm off I start painting and then by mm-hmm. the end of the game after the painting finished I'll put the score on the scoreboard I'll sign and date at the back of it and it's set you know that painting that canvas is ready to find a new home if I can get it into a new home somewhere. So is it ever like a race? Like, are you ever like, oh no, it's the top of the ninth, and I still have all this left to do? Or are you pretty yeah. good at pacing yourself? It's you know, it's I mean, I've done enough now where I am. I, I my pace is pretty good. I mean, it's it's it's. I always get it done, but I mean, there is still there is trepidation. There is it's always a bit of a race, or it's always like you know, there's always anxiety. I always want to make sure, okay, this is you know, I want to do my job right. I want to do my job properly. So there's always a uh, go on, let's get this done. Yesterday was really yesterday was crazy. They they I was at the ballpark doing that little painting of the batting cage, and I got a message from one of the the people at the Torrels. And I've got to say, the Torrels are an amazing team. The people have been fantastic. They're the best fans, the best um, staff. The players are great. Uh, they're absolutely amazing what they do. And I got a message from somebody and it said, hey, you, you, we'd like to invite you to do fir- first pitch today. Like, And I was like, no way, that's incredible. Oh, and, uh, excellent. and I was like, wow. I was like, okay, that's great. And then, of course, it was a guy in the press room who'd said, oh, why don't you get Andy to do it? So I was like, so anyway, so I'm so I'm, I'm doing first pitch. And that was, you know, I've done first pitch a few times now in different places. Um, but I love this team so much and I love this place so much that it was like, oh my, I can't think of anything more that I want to do. Like, it was just like, this is such an honor. So I did the first pitch and then, but of course that's like normally when I'm setting up and getting myself set for the game and all the rest of it. So then after I've done that, I'm like, right, I've got to get back up there and start painting. <laughs> so I get painting. But then also like I've got to know kind of the mascots and the cheerleaders and all these different people at the stadium. So they'd said to me, Hey, tomorrow we want to do something with you in the sixth inning. But the thing is, is it was all in Spanish. This guy was telling me all in Spanish and my Spanish is not great. It's, it's, it's pretty ropey. I can understand a bit, but I'm, I'm, he's telling me all in Spanish. And I'm like, okay, I think he wants something to do in the sixth inning. Okay, okay. I don't really know what's going on, but okay. So in the sixth inning, I go down to like where they tell me to get to. And then what it was going to be was I was going to do a painting on the field of the mascot because they've got a female mascot and then they've got their male mascots, like both bulls. And um, and so the, the male mascot was going to paint like a Titanic picture of the female mascot on a sofa during the middle of the sixth inning. And I was going to do the same. So they were like, okay, you can have about 30 or 40 seconds to paint this picture of this, this mascot like right there on the middle of the field. So I'm down, so I'm painting the painting. This is the painting that I was doing yesterday. I've got this one here, nice, bright, sunny day one. So I'm there painting this. Then at like the bottom of the fifth, I run down the stairs with my easel and everything, go down underneath the dugout by the opposition dugout, meet all the the mascots again. We go through the plan and then sixth inning or the break in the sixth, top of the sixth, I'm on the field with my easel, Titanic music's playing. There's all these people looking down at me. (laughs) My heart's like shaking. My hands are going all over the place. And then you're doing that, and it was like, wow, this is great. This is really fun. But also, I've still got to finish my painting up there. So then after I finish that, it's like, okay, back off the field, run up the stairs, get back to the painting behind the easel. So it was it was quite uh, – so in terms of pace, my pace is great. I, I can get it done. Um, I paint quickly. You've got to paint quickly when you're doing this. Um, but I love it. You know, it's 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 that all that – all the the movement, the noise, the the atmosphere is all that I want in the painting. That's kind of the, always the point of it. How does a Cuban field feel to uh, – Field in Panama. How does a German field field or field a field in Scotland? I heard you talking to Paul, the the guy from yep. Baseball Scotland. Yeah, he was and, great. You know, like I, I was painting up in Scotland. This was it was kind of around COVID. It was again, it was just after COVID, just during COVID, during the one of the when we could go out the house again. Went up to Scotland, did a few ballparks up there, and you know there, I was up there on my birthday, the fourth of July, and it was you couldn't see. It was completely foggy. The sea was. I was in Aberdeen in the Highlands. The sea was just over there, but you could not see the sea. And I remember somebody got a fluorescent ball i think it's like a softball smacked it up in the air to somebody who was like in center field to see if they could see it well enough 
That was like the <laughs> test of, can we play the game? It was amazing. And I stood on the hill painting all this fog that was rolling in, rolling out. And, you know, how's that out there? You, you know, there's nothing like it. That, that was Aberdeen. Um, so it was, that's what it's all about for me is, is, is being at the place, capturing the moment. It's almost like um, I used to do a lot of pinhole photography and, and a bit of tin type photography as well, like very slow photography formats. So to me, it's almost like you're taking a photograph, like a mo moving photograph, because everyone's moving around, things are all over the place. So it's it's got time in there, it's got motion, it's got the atmosphere. That's that's my that's my aim. That's what I want. Wow, this is so <laughs> cool. <laughs> this is so cool. There's so much more to this than just okay. I show up, I paint the scene. Are you talking about the Torrells at the moment? Yeah, yeah, we're going yeah. for the Jack Mayfield. Yeah. Is that the dude from the Angels? Yeah, he was an Astro. Yes, yeah. He was the guy with the with the crayon bat that Bruce made. This is wow. No, I like the Motley you know, this team is. You know, a great yeah. a great thing the other day was there was Pedro Strope, and then in the it was the Leones, the Yucatan were playing. They, they were the opposition mm -hmm. last series, and on the Leones dock, Yucatan is um oh my goodness, what his name is uh, Fernando Rodney. So you had oh. Fernando Rodney. It was like yeah. the battle of the cats. Yeah, it was yeah, well, Fernando Rodney. The battle, of, the battle of the caps. I was like, this is amazing. Like, imagine that as a pitching matchup. Like the two, yeah. the two caps. But, um, now, were you yeah, able to paint Fernando Rodney? That's the question. No, he was. Oh. I mean, so, I, and it depends who you say. Normally, I paint the home team on the fields because then you've got the most okay. players. Right. But it would have been. It would have been cool to. He because he used to play. He used to play for TJ. I think. I think last year, year before he was playing for TJ. But you get all these old. Like, or you know, Didi Gregorius is playing at the moment here. In, mm -hmm. in so you get great. these. Yeah, you get these. You get some interesting people who pop up, and you're like, "Wow, this is, this is like you say, a bit of a motley yeah. crew of people coming through and have been in the MLB and all sorts." Yeah, when we every now and then, I will get an order for bats from the Mexican league. I work at Victus Sports, and we make their bats. Um, nice. Some of them are from for the Toros. Um, there's like I think they're called the Tomateros. Is that a Mexican league? Yeah, yeah, team? yeah. Culiacan. Yeah. Culiacan. yeah. Um, some yeah. of the players that come through, like I saw Jorge Cantu, and I was like, no way oh, is that right. dude still playing. <laughs> He's still floating around. Right. Uh, I believe this was last year, and I believe it was more like the corpse of Jorge Cantu, but he was still playing. This he was is, doing I got to check out the Mexican League, man. Mexican League Revenge Tour, Jorge Cantu. This is awesome. But yeah, so it, it, one, one it, question I did want to ask was... Uh, I'm looking yeah. at your paintings and I'm by no means like an art critic or anything, but I feel like the sure. style of them is like familiar to me for some reason. Is there like a particular style that you uh, go for, like a, a like an artist that you are inspired by? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, I guess I'm an impressionist expressionist. So you've got the impressionists like Monet, um... You've got the expressionists and Van Gogh, but like my 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 guys are like late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds. Um, so you know I like Matisse, Picasso, uh, Van Gogh, I absolutely adore. Um, so I have like kind of the color thing of the expressionists. Like the colors aren't always necessarily a hundred percent realistic. It's more about the feeling. It's more about the motion. But it's mm -hmm. also very impressionistic in the fact that it's trying. I'm trying to capture an impression of the game. I'm trying to capture the moment. Um, and again, like the like the charcoal pieces, you see they're quite expressive. The lines are really important. So, um, yeah, like late 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 like late nineteenth century, early eight twentieth uh, century art is my is my go to guys. So if if they're interested in color and expression and movement, then you know I'm 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 all over. Them. So here's my question, Andy, and I yeah. know nothing about art. I'm I'm low class, right? Oh, yeah. um, and so, so here's I mean, you're, so, elevate, you're elevating an artist there. Be careful. I, I'll there give you, you a really I'll give you a really quick story. You didn't ask for this, but it's it's funny. My uh, my uncle Scott, his father is like a sculptor. He worked. He made oh, models right. for years. Um, he has a lot of stuff in museums and everything's very accomplished. His name Ron Ron Spicer. He's a really nice guy. And so at one point we had them over for dinner. We're kind of chatting, and he's this well-known artist and so i was talking to him and i was like here's what i don't understand about art i like when i look at a painting i want it to look like the thing it looks like if you paint george washington make it look like george washington don't make it look right. like some reasonable facsimile of george washington and right. my example was are you familiar with i'm assuming you know picasso right i'm assuming you're yeah. familiar with his work yeah. there's this 
there's this pa- painting by Picasso called Don Quixote. Are you familiar with it? Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I'll put a picture up of it for the people that are yeah, listening. Yeah, throw that up for the I, fans. I, I look, and I'm like 18 when I'm having this conversation, and I go, that painting sucks. Like that, I don't understand. It looks like a four year old did it, and it's it's yeah. one color, it's black, and it's just like squiggly lines. And he started giving me, yeah, and he started giving me this this whole oh well, if you look at it the way the sun is positioned here, actually breaks up the painting, and oh, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But he's giving me yeah. all this stuff about why it's this incredibly amazing painting, and I yeah. went, but it, but it's not. But I look at it and I go, I can draw that. And he yeah. was like, but you can't. I, that's, and like, I was literally, I didn't want to insult you, but I guess no, you're far enough me, away, please. you're not going to punch me. <laughs> like, you couldn't. You couldn't. If you could, you'd be right. a millionaire. That's, that's yeah. like, yeah, you, that's fun. That's exactly what, that's, that's, it looks dead easy. And I, I get, you know, of course, I used to teach art for 15 years. So I was trying to convince kids about why they should enjoy painting and why Picasso was great and all the rest of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is, I mean, there is, uh, there's so much to it, like Picasso. Like it's it's the it's the it's the touch. It's the it's the it's the thickness of the line. It's the pressure. It's the everything about it. And that's why when people go, oh yeah, I could do that. It's like no, you couldn't. You wouldn't right. you don't understand. And and it's again, I don't not many to insult you or be horrible, but it, no, please you don't, insult me. I you deserve don't, it. You, but it's, it's the thing of it's just people don't understand how hard that is. And it's right, and it's it's like it's 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 the thing of doing doing these. Like I know right. every time you know what I, one of the things I love about baseball is every time I see a baseball game, I see something completely different that I've never seen before. And there'll be something that I'll just be like, Wow, I haven't seen that before. That was unusual. What happened with that play? Or there's always something strange and quirky happens. But it's also the same in this, is like you're always experimenting with new colours, new mixtures of colour. All of a sudden, like at the moment, normally I, I carry a ton of colors and I still carry them, but I'm only using four colors at the moment. And that's like completely crazy for me. Like for me, and it, it, it doesn't sound it, I know, but also <laughs> for me, like nerd, nerding wise, I'm just like, wow, like this is a whole right. new world I've just got into. And it's, but you know, I talk to the players about this as well. You know, they come up to me and talk about the work and whatever else. And I always say what they do is just like what I do. Like when they're taking their hacks and they're taking that, you know, in the B, taking BP. I'm doing the same thing, but I'm working with my eraser, working with my charcoal, working with my pencil, and I'm just trying to get it different. I'm just trying to perfect my line. I'm trying to perfect the marks. And you never get it perfect, or you never feel like you get it perfect, but that's why you go back the next day and do it again, and you want to keep practicing, you want to keep working out. And it's just like you're fine-tuning those muscles. And almost the good artists do less. I always think the good artists are the ones that do less. They, 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 they put less effort into it. They think less about it. They let it flow the most. And it's because all the muscle memory, all the training, all the reflexes they've built up, they don't need to do everything. They don't need to go 110 miles an hour all the time. They can they can take it easy. They can they, they they've got the skills, they've got the abilities where they can just let it let it flow. And I think that's that's when you get to be a peak artist. So I'm 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 working my way to there, wherever that is. <laughs> no, I well, so here here's why I brought that up because, like yeah. I said, I don't know anything about art. And I'm the kind of guy who I'm in and out of an art museum in like 10 minutes. Like I walk past each painting, oh, yeah. and I go, that looks nice. And, and like, I move oh, on to the next one. <laughs> Whereas like, I'm sure like somebody yeah, yeah. looks at it for like an hour and is like, wow. And I just, yeah. I don't, it's not, you know what it is? I have no understanding of the greatness of all this. But here's, right, here's right, why, right. here's why I bring it up. Because I look at your paintings and it's, it's, it's obviously not like photo realism because you're doing it in like no. three hours. Right. Yeah. But it's also not like a weird, like, um, you know, like the grass isn't blue and the sky isn't red and stuff. So like, it's realistic, but also like, how did you find that balance of like what you wanted to do with your pain? Does my question make sense? I, it does. And it's, okay. and it's really tricky. It's really tricky because to be quite honest with you, you've just hit on it there. Like I kind of want the grass to be blue sometimes. And maybe I want the sky to be red or whatever, or, you know, I don't care. Like, I just feel like whatever happens, happens. It's like, okay, I'll get my paints out, see what happens, let's get on with it, see where we get to at the end of the game. And for example, like this this painting the other day that I was doing, this is the the BP with the guys there around the cage. Well, they, mm-hmm. they were wearing black uniforms and I painted them all red. And, you know, at one point, I think it was Bo Amaral who was, who was in centre field came over. He was like, hey, how's it going? And I was like, yeah, it's all right. It's got a bit psychedelic today. I don't know why you guys are red. You're all dressed in black <laughs> and whatever. But it was like, you know, that's all right. Like, it doesn't matter. It's just... Um, Again, I, I think to begin with, I, I was probably more concerned or worried about getting things. I guess there's always that thing as an artist, you're trying to you're trying to work to the audience or please the audience, but also you've got your own integrity, your own creative um, juices that you need to fulfill. And it's that thing of getting that balance between, okay, where where is it mine? And, and, and do I want to do this or do I care really? And you know, actually, mm-hmm. the, the other night I sat right behind home plate painting this 
hopefully this guy's not listening to this. And I'm painting, I'm painting the view by nine plate. And this guy taps me on the shoulder and he says to me in Spanish, oh, you haven't painted this bit uh, red. You, you painted it purple. You need to change that. It's, it's, it's red. And I was like, who the hell is this guy? Like, I can't imagine. What he, I, I thought tomorrow <laughs> yeah. I'm going to come to his workplace and I'm going to sit next to him, tap him on the shoulder every five minutes and tell him what he needs to do, see how he likes it. But anyway, I don't like so... that you use a, a Phillips screw on this thing that you're putting <laughs> exactly. together. I think you should probably use a flathead going forward. You know, <laughs> you, you've, you've missed a bit, mate. You, uh, yeah. So anyway, so so he tells me this. And I was like, I was like, yeah, I was like, ah, thank you very much. You know, yeah, Bishop Grass, I appreciate it. And um but I was like, yeah, that, that was kind of, that's part of the whole thing there is that to him, it had to be red because it's red over there. To me, I, I don't really care because to me, it, and, and my, again, my Spanish isn't good enough to explain to him. There's all right. about the balance. It's all about the balance of the paint. It's all about how I feel about the paint. It's all about where the paint kind of takes me. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the fact that it's not red over there and it is red over there, eh, it doesn't matter. To me, it don't matter. And it's, it's, it's. Of course, it matters to some people, but that's that's fine. You know, that's like uh, it's like music. It's like, you know, you can't explain jazz to everybody. If you like jazz, you like jazz. If you don't like jazz, then you can't say yeah. to somebody, oh, jazz is really good. You're going to like it. No, I don't like it. Like, it's taste at the end of the day. And it depends what you want art to be. It depends what you want music to be. It depends what you want, you know, food to be at this. Right. Yeah. We, we one, thing on I just, on that. one thing I just thought of was you were saying earlier that you were like, good artists do less. And then you Ooh. said that it's like jazz and i just immediately thought of uh miles davis evidently said it's the notes you don't play and exactly. i was like bam exactly. it's like the exact exactly same it. thing that's exactly it. right it's, it's it's you know you cannot you can really overdo it like this this painting's quite done to a certain extent but here you go let me show you the one that i'm talking about here this yeah. one oh my goodness i don't think we oh, here we go. Let's see if I can this is the one from behind home plate so there's the guys okay. there i don't think you see them back in there but the, the sky, I don't know where you can see the sky, but it's very, very thin, very, very watery. very mm -hmm. And even the, the stands over here, this is the stand that he didn't like on this side. And it's almost not done. But you know what? It doesn't matter. It's just enough that people can understand that's where the stand is. Right. And again, that and, and again for that game, I wasn't focused on the crowd and who was who was sitting in front of me and my friends over here or whatever else. I, I just wanted to, I wanted to really focus on home plate and the players right there. And the, just the sense of it all, the sense of the mountains in the distance. So it does depend on the subject matter, depends where you are. I've got this, This I'll show you this quickly as well. This is this is kind of one of probably my biggest accomplishments, one of my biggest accomplishments, accomplishments today. I like the baseball. This is, this is a book that I made in the Dominican Republic. This is what first took me to the Dominican Republic. So I, I was hired by a agency i was hired by a company there to go and make a book all about the fake baseball in the republic and you can you can download a copy online from google that like the baseball but the again you've got this thing of well i was doing the historic paintings there to begin with but then i was also like in the jungles painting softball games oh there's david ortiz so i was invited there, to yeah paint. i saw that on your going, website I was, yeah, I, was so I was cool. invited to go invited to go and paint him and like so you've got all these different characters you're meeting all over the place Mm -hmm. and it was just this it was quite an amazing journey really like of it was the whole season i was there for the whole season painting all the games all the stadiums but you know the kids on the street playing um uh, vitia with the with the, the broom handle and a, a bottle top the fans in the stands the mascots everything it was it was quite an amazing experience and even like like something like this I was, this is in the the commentary booth at uh stadio oh, PCA. Okay. so i was there I was there for a game behind Frank Lindell, they were, um, Franklin Mirabal, and he is like operatic in his performance when he commentates on a game. I've got a few videos on my YouTube or my, my Instagram, on my TikTok. There's a few videos of him working his magic, and he is an absolute performer. So, you know, you've got experiences like that where you're you're in the booth with these these inc incredible fresh professionals. So it was, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, quite cool. It was a very cool experience. So that was like the first... Well, that was like the big. I can't remember what the first question was. Now, I completely lost my train of thought. But that's, that's fine. That's, We're that's just a, chatting. That's a lot We're of just chatting. We're just chatting. I do have right. a, a question about the um the broadcaster booth picture. Yeah, yeah I was, I'm kind of trying to take in what you were saying about like you know how you paint a picture and not like you know how we we came in with our scrub knowledge and we we're like oh well it doesn't look photorealistic <laughs> yeah we're going to leave with a to, lack of knowledge too we're yeah, idiots. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to take this in right and what i what i was seeing in that was i was like okay so i'm noticing in the booth there's a lot mm -hmm. of detail and then when yeah. you get out of the booth like it didn't even really look like there was anybody in the stands or anything right, and the, the right, detail right. fades out 
Right. So to me, I'm like, okay, so the focus is entirely the, the booth and then yeah. everything else is yeah. just the backdrop. Right, exactly. So okay. it's, yeah, that's, that was what we were talking about. The notes that you don't there you go. Right. So again, it's the, it's the batting cage is mm. the subject. The guy back here, he's important. You put in a few indicators, like there's the right. Coke bottle kind of in the back there on the stand, but it's a pretty, mm. basically, pretty crummy, badly drawn Coke bottle web. It's just enough to indicate this is No, it's, 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 <laughs> it's minimalist. It's, it's, it's so, what you need. It's what you need to understand that that is a bottle in the back there. So that's yeah, you know, that, it's that, that it's that it's that balance of it's it's that understanding, and that's where you hone your skills. That's where you get the, the touch of like that's enough. I've indicated that that's enough. But well, so here's yeah. this is just the baseball. This is just the art podcast today because yeah, I right. don't know I don't know any of this. <laughs> I'm I'm, lear I'm learning, but but one of the things, and I might be overthinking this. Let me know what you think. But it seems to me like. Because when you were saying, you know, I try to do it from first pitch to the last pitch and be yeah. done. And so I yeah. was just thinking, you have to prioritize things. You might not be able to finish that guy's jersey. You might not be able to finish the mountain yeah. or whatever. But it, but it, it's it's now that you're talking about it, it's not so much that you're prioritizing and saying, I can't get everything done, so I got to pick and choose. It's more mm -hmm. you saying, what's important today, right? Exactly. So the announcer is exactly. important, so that's what exactly. I'm going to do. And exactly. I'm not that worried about, about the stadium. And, and one of the guys, exactly. are you familiar with a guy named Greg Kreindler? Yeah, I like, yeah, I know Greg. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, I, I so Greg, like yeah. when I think of art, like that's my kind of thing. Where I look at it, and it's like right. that's a photo. You know what I mean? Like oh, yeah. he as Willie yeah, Mays, yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. like that's Willie Mays, oh. man. And like that's the kind of thing that I think is really cool. Just like yeah, as yeah, you yeah. know, like my no, personal thing. Greg but so like when I thought right. about that though, it's like I, I remember I listened to him on um, Rob Nyer's podcast, and he was talking about how uh, it takes yeah. him like weeks just researching, yeah. you know, what yeah. kind of fabric they use in the uniform what kind of dye they use yeah. and everything and so yeah. it's like a year-long process to do one painting yeah. whereas you're saying i'm gonna give myself three hours and i'm gonna do this yeah. so like what's the what's the story i want to tell basically yeah 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 yeah. Exactly. and it's just a completely different thing it's not you saying i'm taking this picture this historical artifact and recreating uh -huh. it it's you saying what do i want people to know about this baseball game that i went to yeah 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 and it's very i think that's okay. what's really interesting with that is that like you know, Greg is, well, to me, Greg is really interested in light. When you look at his paintings, it's all about the light. And it's, it's the same kind of thing in many respects. He's interested in the atmosphere. You'll see these beautiful ways that he paints the, the creases and folds and the, 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 the light shining on the jerseys. And it's all, he's fascinated with the light, I'm sure. And I've kind of talked to him about which artist he likes. I'm like, yeah, that's a, that's a guy who likes light. Um, but he's like, again, if you're thinking about jazz music or, I don't know, any sort of artist, he just plays a different sort of style, a different sort of way to me. And it's just yeah. that um, we yeah. all have our... But also, also, I think what, what comes across a lot, when you meet different artists or, you know, I remember at art school or, you know, you have your graphic designers and illustrators and printmakers, sculptors, whatever else. Everybody's got their own kind of temperament and, and their own kind of personality. And that's the style. That's what comes out in your art. The more you can let that come out in your work, the more true to you the work is, the more satisfied you are with it, but also the better it will be as well, I think. And going back, you know, going back to the story as well, is I never know what the story's going to be in the painting. There's things like, you know, a little kid comes up and asks me to sign the ball the other day. So, of course, I've got to paint him in the picture. So I paint this little boy in a picture. You know, I met some, <laughs> I met some guys the other, you know, this is really cool. I met a few people two nights ago. You know, they, I bumped into them and they said, oh, we went to see your exhibition. I was like, oh, that's really cool. And they, they were there about a month ago. And they were like, oh, we didn't know you were here. And yeah, yeah, so we get talking for a bit. Really nice people. The next day, I'm there and I'm, I'm kind of just down the road from them or just down the aisle from them. And I'm like, oh, there's those guys. I said hello to them. And as I'm painting, I'm thinking, oh, you know what? I'll put them in the paint. So if they've been really good to me, I really, you know, they were really kind and all that. We had a nice chat. So I put them in the paint. So I put those people in the paint. So as the game goes along, if I meet people or something interesting happens, the other day I caught a foul ball as well. So I was painting and I saw this ball fly over the top and I was like, okay, that's because I can hear a foul ball now. I can hear home run, hear a foul ball. So I could hear it and I was like, and you've got to be careful because you're painting. And I could hear it. And I thought, okay, that's right. an example. And I could and I could tell it was going to come my way by the sound. And then I saw it and I thought, okay, it's going to bounce there. All those people down there should get it. If they don't get it, I think it's going to come right near me. And sure enough, it span up. The guy, they didn't get it, and I just stuck out my left hand. Luckily, somehow I put my palette into my right hand, and I just stuck out my hand, and the ball went in and stayed. And I was like, <laughs> wow, that's like it was the best catch I've ever done. I was like, I hope somebody's got that film somewhere. But but anyway, these little things happen. So I was like, okay, I've got to put that in the painting. So in the bottom of that painting, there's a there's me with my easel, and I've there's a ball coming towards my left hand. So I do I do little things like that. And then here in Mexico, these are really important, the rattles. I don't know if you've seen Ooh. these. But the crowd, like, again, this is what I love about baseball and about the culture of baseball. Was in Santa Domingo. I was there last year with this book and um, went to the Serie de Caribe. And I was painting the Serie de Caribe. And I go in the stadium and you hear all these rattles. And I was like, oh, yeah, Mexico. 
And when you go to a Mexican ballpark, I'm going to do this, but it's pretty noisy. So yeah. when you go to a Mexican ballpark, you hear that all the time. Okay. And, and then, so of course, these guys that I put in the painting had this, and they said, "Oh, do you want to have a rattle?" I was like, "Well, yeah, of course." They've signed the rattle for me at the top here. And oh. This is a little, a little souvenir from Mexico. So I was like, oh, "That's amazing." So of course, the rattle goes in the painting. The people that I met go in the painting. All these mm. little things, all these little things that come along, um, they all, they all become part of the artwork. So it's got stories within stories. Yeah, this is super cool, and it's, it's. It seems to me, and I keep going back to me being a rube and not knowing anything about this, but <laughs> it seems to me, because when I looked you up and everything, I just assumed, okay, he, he they, they bring him in to paint the ballpark. I thought, yeah. you know, a team would reach out or something and say, yeah. hey, we want you to do the Oakland Coliseum. Actually, the A's would never spend money on anything. I figured yeah. a different team might yeah. hit you up and say, hey, we do this. But now I'm realizing it's not so much you, um, you know, just, just recreating something that you saw. It's more like one of the things I noticed in that book that you were showing um, was that there was a, a section that said, uh, pelota en la calle which means yeah. ball on the street and yeah. so it, it's not so much you going okay i got this stadium i'll do a painting of it and then i'll move on it's more you like experiencing the yeah. culture of the yeah. all the different cultures of baseball yeah. and then documenting it in a certain exactly. way exactly yeah. exactly yeah i'm learning for me it's the whole right. for me it's the whole it's the it's the it's a travel log you know it's a visual it's a visual diary of, of my travels around the world within the baseball within the baseball universe you know so it's uh it's at every, it's every level of it. It's little kids playing um, stick ball. It's it's the um, the softball. It's yes, yeah, it's, it's the whole experience. So that's the that's what I want to do. That's what I want to keep doing. Um, I mean, going back to an early thing, teams do reach out a little bit, but it's um, it, it it really varies. Like some some teams are willing to help me with the travel or or the hotel or those sorts of things. Some teams not so much. Uh, the the, the top it's yeah, it does it does vary. <laughs> Um, but you know, well, for it, me, it's it's just that thing of just, like I said right at the start. It's just a matter of keeping going. Um, I just love the fact that it just it just keeps getting bigger and it keeps getting better. I'm going back to England after I finish the title show. I go back to England for MLB UK or MLB London in in uh, London. The, the Cubs and Cardinals are playing, so it'll be great to be back there and paint that series. Um, and then and I'm going to be in Chicago actually after that at the Save the Conference in Chicago. They've asked me to go and talk about my work there, so that's going to be a lot of fun. So it's it's just it's amazing, you know, it's amazing. I'm very thankful to to everyone I've met on the way, everyone who's helped support me. It's it's been it's been an amazing ride so far. So yeah. I just want to you know keep it going. Yeah. This is awesome. Well, if you ever want to do Citizens Bank Park again, I live like ten minutes away. You can crash with me. Great. This is this is so cool. So I do I do want to ask. I do want to get into something in particular. Uh, you were talking about being the official painter of Great Britain, and I was talking to Tom uh, on our last episode. At the end, I was like, "Okay, so coming up, we got Donovan Benoit, we've got Andy Brown," and I even said, "I was like, Andy Brown is the official painter of Team Great Britain," and Tom was like, "Yeah, the the official what?" So like, how did how did yeah. that come about? Because I don't, I've never heard of an official painter before. So was this no, your was... idea? Was this their idea? It was, you know, again, I feel like my work's just evolved. Like through the years, it's just stepped up. You know, it went from me doing it just as a fan, learning about baseball. Then it was like some of the players started to see what I was doing and I was meeting like these, these players. And, you know, that was kind of cool. And it's just stepped up a notch, stepped, stepped up a notch. And then I, then, you know, I'd, I'd been all around Japan, Korea, Taiwan, wherever. I'd done all the states. And I was like, right, well, you know, I've done all the ballparks, but there was, there's still so much to do. Because to me, it's, it's, I guess there's, there is the ballparks and there is the game, but there's so much that goes on around the edges of the game, you know, painting the corners. Like there's the, the people selling beer in the corner. They've, they've got a story, a story. There's the, you know, like it's all about the batting cage. There's the pitching, uh, the ball pens. There's all these different bits that I thought, there's all these fascinating bits in a ballpark that I still want to paint and still want to cover. And I think Drew, the, 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 the head coach of uh, Team GB, we kind of knew each other, I think, from the MLB London series, the first series. I think we talked a little bit then. And I said, oh, it'd be great to one day paint Team GB in action. I've never, you know, because I, I didn't really know there was much baseball in in the, in the UK or in, in England. So, you know, I kind of came back to the UK then and I was, I was kind of finding out a little bit more about it. And I said to Drew about it. And then, I don't know, maybe it was 2021. It was just before the Euros. I don't know. At some point I reached out to Drew and said, Hey, like it'd be really, really cool to, you know, do this. I think I could do a great job. You know, I kind of know how, you know, a locker room works or our team dynamic works. And I feel like I can, you know, hopefully have the right sort of touch where I can be, you know, in, in the right places, but not in the way and all that sort of stuff. 
And, um, you know, and he said, yeah, I mean, to be honest, and again, thanks to Drew, he took a chance on me. You know, he had this guy come along with all the paint and canvas and whatever else and follow everyone around and, uh, and make paintings. And yeah, he was, you know, incredibly supportive. All the players were incredibly supportive. I mean, it was fantastic. Like the, and I think, I mean, I'd like to think they were quite, they were, they were quite chuffed to have me along. They loved it. Like, you know, I was doing portraits of them and, uh, you know, we're playing cards and drinking beers and all the rest of it. And I was doing drawing pictures of them doing that. There's actually a book of that on my website, Happy and Glorious from the 2021 European Championships. I've got the whole story of the practice. But I thought it was just fascinating the way that the team gelled and became really a cohesive unit. And then we went into the actual tournament itself and it was just, it was just fantastic. And then, and then, yeah, I was at the WBC qualifiers in, in Regensburg and the, the, the other pool in uh, Panama. Um, and with Team GB, yeah, it was fantastic. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an absolute honour when you, the, I'm not much of a flag waver, but when I heard the national anthem start playing, I was like, "Wow, this is great!" Like I'm here with official artists or Team GB. I was like, oh, "This is this is cool. This is this is me. This is you know where I'm from," um, and it means a lot. You know, I'm very proud of that. And it was it was again, you know, it's been that was one of my best experiences in my as a career as an artist. Um, and I just feel like it was just the level of my work. It was just like, okay, this is this is what I should be doing. Like I can do the games. That's no problem. But you know what? Fans want to see what the players do in their off time. They want to see them practicing. They want to see them training. They want to see you know, all the different levels of it. There's all the steps to the game. So that for me was really the, it's just a natural progression. I feel like that's that's where my work's going. That's like, you know, what I'm doing here. What I want to do next is what I'd like to do like a full season with a professional team. Or with a, I did it in the lead on with, with the, the league here, but I feel like I want to do it with just one team, follow them around home and away for one season. That'd be a really cool experience. So I'm, I'm looking to do that. Who knows when? We'll see. Yeah, well, uh, you guys heard it here first. We got Andy Brown, yeah. his upcoming project. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Wait, which team's going to be the first to strike is the real question. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, Who do we think? That Do, do you think, would you want to follow like an MLB team or would you want to follow an international team? Ah, uh, it wouldn't matter to me. No, it doesn't matter to me, really. Um, no. I mean, if, if they'll have me along, I'll go like that's that's pretty much it um you know I'm, I'm just I'm just all about the experience and the time and the the uh, you know just the chance to the chance to do it um so yeah I mean I'd love to work for an MLB team doing that but you know the being here with the Torals is fantastic like I love the 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 Latin American baseball for me is is one of the best brands of baseball you know the the dominican ballparks are amazing the the ballparks here in mexico are just completely different they're, they're fantastic mm -hmm. so um so to me it, it doesn't really matter you know like i said like during covid i was traveling around the uk painting the worcester sorcerers and the liverpool trojans up in uh tayport painting the breakers so again that they're, they're, they're you know guys who are not necessarily the uh, they're probably not in the gym so much as the MLB players, but they're still playing baseball, and that for me is fantastic. <laughs> you know, I want to be, I want to be there on the sidelines painting them, seeing how they do it, seeing what they do. To me, I, you know, I just admire their work, their dedication, their enthusiasm. I want to get down on, on canvas or paper. Yeah, maybe we'll maybe we'll get Andy Brown painting the Perky Omen Valley Twilight League. There we you go. Know? That there's, sounds there's that some, sounds intriguing. What is that? Is some, that where you play? Yeah, tell no, me about no, that. no, no, but. Uh, that's a league up in Montgomery County, at okay. north of where me and Ethan live. There's a lot of like ex pros and like college players who play up there. Right, right, right. The guys I know who play in that league are like legit players. Right. So, oh, uh, not, so not me and you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. You know, m more the opposite of me and you. Right, but uh, right. yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like it, it's not going to be on the level of like your Mexican league or whatever. But it, I would right. venture a guess that that some of these teams could probably hang with like an abl team yeah yeah so um, i, I yeah. did want to ask you that andy did you ever did you ever go to australia and paint N not yet not yet that's on the I, list i mean there's still i think the ones that i really want to hit are there's colombia venezuela argentina i you know in panama i met the argentinian uh, national team down there and I got a few, you know, a few people talk to me about places they play in um, Argentina. And there's one area in particular in the northwest. I think it's called Salta, Salta. And uh, I've seen lots of some pictures of it. It's stunning, absolutely beautiful. So to me, I'd love to go and paint over there. Um, there's a, there's the new league, you know, in um, Baseball United happening in the Middle East. And again, you mm -hmm. know, at, at, um, the WBC in Panama is meeting the the Pakistani baseball team there and talking to them a little bit. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to go and paint the baseball United thing. I think that's a really interesting. Again, it's this global thing of baseball. How you've got the 
the spread of baseball, how the, you know, why is there, you know, very, it's, it's, it's like, why is there so much cricket in India and Pakistan and Australia and New Zealand? Well, it's because of the, the history. Why is there so much baseball? Why is there Italy, uh, why is there baseball in Italy exactly where it is in Italy? Well, that's where I think the, the US Marines landed in World War II and so on. And so you have this beautiful spread of baseball and how it follows around the world and the history of the world. Uh, so to me, it's been it's fascinating. All these little corners, like I've seen some ballparks in Pakistan, and they're very, very basic, I guess you'd call them. Um, but to me, that's what I want to be. I want to be painting those guys who pick up a stick and hit a ball. Like, Let's go. Mm -hmm. And basic doesn't mean bad. Some of my favorite no. parks are like minor league parks, you know, independent Absolutely. league parks. No, so. absolutely, 110%. Like the best to me, like there's, uh, I'm trying to think. There's even there's even a place down here. I did a little, little watercolor of a place like near the center of town here. Real ramshackle little, they mostly play softball on it, but it's beautiful. You know, that place mm -hmm. I showed you painting in the jungle in Dominican. That was amazing. One of the best nights of my life in the middle of the jungle with loads of guys playing a reggaeton and drinking rum it was fantastic so yeah. you know it's 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 not about the 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 standard or level of the baseball to me it's just about right. it's just baseball yeah the, uh this, this might be a hot take i actually don't know where people stand on this i was a huge fan of regensburg i oh, really yeah. like that park yeah yeah very much so. i was looking over uh some of the pictures he painted of it and i was like yeah no that's a that's definitely regensburg i like yeah. just i don't know it, it I don't know how to describe why I liked it so much. Like maybe you know, it just well, that's the thing about art. You of, don't have to, do you? Yeah, but it, I feel like it of... kind of reminds me of like the way baseball used to be. You know, okay. like there's like a couple hundred fans in the stands. Yeah, you know, you got you got guys who are like like the Czech team, guys who are not professional baseball yeah. players. They go out there yeah. and they're like electricians, you know, for yeah, a living. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they go out there and, you know, and the, the Czech team and also the British team actually really yeah. both did this. They both kind of took the world by storm. Oh, yeah. So, uh, huge fan of, of this past fall in Regensburg. Absolutely. So. Well, you know, one of one of the it, it, Regensburg is, is a great example of what I think makes a great ballpark park where it reflects the culture, reflects the local surroundings. So they've got that beautiful kind of stone, gray kind of stone that they use a lot in the ballpark. And when you're there watching a game or painting it, you notice that the hills behind it, they have all have this similar kind of slate color to them. So they're taking materials from the local landscape and putting it in the ballpark. And it's, it's actually building the place. It's building this place. And it makes it feel like you're from there. It gives you that that gritty kind of like the, the soil, you know. And mm -hmm. I think that to, to me, that make, that make those are the best ballparks. There's the Diablos Rojos in Ciudad de Mexico. That's one of the greatest ballparks I've been to. because It's got the history of the past, but it's also a very forward thinking and modern looking ballpark. And that's what I think, again, the power of ballpark is, is it can tell the story, it can tell the history, it can tell so much. It can, intentionally or not, it can tell you a lot. But when they do it intentionally, they do it sensitively, and it's not just about, okay, we need to get, you know, we need to get a big Coca-Cola sign over there. Um, right. When it's actually, there's actually like some critical thinking behind it. I think, you know, they're, they're amazing places that can really, uh, really, they're, you know, they're very valuable in all sorts of ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would be, you know, I, I, that's, I feel like, you know, that's kind of what sets apart something like Wrigley Field from, you yeah. know, like the Marlins new park. Like the Marlins right. park is really impressive. It's yeah. huge. They got a big dome. Yeah. It's really modern. But yeah. then like if you ask people, you know, dude, what do you think is the coolest ballpark out there? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, mostly yeah. going to get like Wrigley and Fenway. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. And it's because but... they have like their unique elements to them. They have a lot of history behind them now. Exactly. And, uh, but I also, I also think with the, the, the Marlins, I, I, I kind of like the ballpark in the fact it's got the very slick look of Miami. It has got a slight feeling of that. Okay, I kind yeah. of like that. One of the biggest things I thought I thought was, and, and, and many baseball fans don't like it, I'm sure you guys don't, but they took out the sculpture. And I no, like, I thought the sculpture I, was better. I was a fan fun. of the sculpture. I like the sculpture. I, I, felt like, I felt like they really missed the trick taking it away. I was like, yeah, you know, it, it was very of the place. It was done, I think, by a local artist, and then you got the, you got the, all the Latin community there. And it was very much of the of, of the place, and I was like, you know, that's that's part of the identity. You know, you're taking that away. I've talked to so many people who were very happy to see the back of it, but I thought no, it's it was. I thought it was really cool. So, but you're right. I I think always the problem is is when, you know, full parts start to get copied. When they start going, you know, I feel like yeah. in on my MLB tour there was there was. There's, I mean, many every ballpark's great in its own way, but sometimes it's okay. We'll get a little bit. We'll get a bit of green 
green steel and we'll, we'll, we'll put it up and it will make it look old and we'll put that up and it'll be a cool ballpark. And, and it kind right. of works. But then you start to find that every ballpark starts to do the same thing. And it's like, yeah. well, now I've seen it, Brett, or, you know, I've seen it again and it's, it's, it's no longer original. It's no longer interesting. And I, I, I always think if it's just different or just be, you know, it's again going back to what we talked about before, just be yourself, which is probably one of the hardest things in the world to be, but be yourself. Right. <laughs> yeah. Now, is this, is this, are these things that you look to a lot when you're painting, like what makes the park unique in the, yeah, the architecture? Absolutely, I, yeah. I imagine that's how you would, you know, signal to people like which park it is with the, yeah. the things that set it apart. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it, I feel like, I mean, animation is just art, but like when uh -huh. you watch like a cartoon, a lot of the time it's not, it, you know, I want this to look exactly like what I'm trying to do. You're just right. kind of communicating what yep. it is. And then what's more important is like the style. Yeah. yeah so. Yeah. Like for you, it's for a, instance, I imagine if you're painting Wrigley, which I assume you have since you yeah, painted all yeah, thirty. Yeah. Um. Now, did you put a lot of attention into like the ivy on the walls? Yeah. That sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You've got to get. You've got to get the. You know what's the iconic things? What are the things in the ballpark that mean I'm at Wrigley? I'm at Fenway. I'm in Stadio Tizkia. I'm in Stadio Chevron. What are the things that are the the key ingredients to make it. You know, Stadio Chevron, we have these amazing mountains in the background. We have the Coke cans on the thing there. We have the Toros sign on top of the, the video screen. We have the the barrios on the, the mountains. You know, I'm looking for all the indicators. What tells me this is this field? But it's also, again, going back to what we were talking about just a minute ago about break and light. It's all about the light and the color. You know, you go to mm -hmm. LA, the, the, the light in LA is very different to the light in Seattle, the light in yeah, it is. Boston yeah, or true. whatever else, you know. And so it's that thing of, I want to get that feel. I want to get that sunlight. Or in Regensburg, I was looking, I, I looked at those paintings a while back now, but they're quite dark, and they've, but they've got a real European kind of German right. kind of feel to them in some way. And it's partly the colors, but it's also just the light, and it's trying to capture that. That's part of the challenge is, can I right. get it to have that buzz, to have that feeling of that place that I was at? Another, right. that, you know what was kind of cool the other day is I was doing this one of um, the batting cage, and as I'm doing it, you know, you drop your palette, you drop your paintbrush, things are going all over the place and then of course a bit of the field ends up in the paint so it ended up that on the paint on the on the paint it's got little grains of the um the infield dirt because i dropped it in the dirt oh, okay. and it's hmm. in the paint so it almost picks up part of the place as well and i've never i've never done it intentionally but it just happens you know and i realized i was doing it the other day and i was like oh god i've got you know part of the infield <laughs> on the paint and I was like, that's great you know it's part again it's part cool. of the thing it's part of the thing you want to carry with it you want that essence you want the feeling of it not everybody likes everything, and that's right. that's kind of what you want. You don't want everybody to be the same. You don't want everybody to have the same opinions. You mm -hmm. want people with different opinions because that's that's how you learn. Yeah, I mean, yeah. baseball is a little bit like that too. You know, like exactly. you got you have all your different kinds of hitters. You know, you got your exactly. your slap hitters, like somebody like Luis exactly. Arias. Then you got like Aaron Judge and like uh, Pete Alonso exactly. who just crush the ball. And then exactly. you got like all around dudes who do everything really well, you know, and it's with pitchers too. So, so really, yeah. when you think about it, you know, baseball kind of is like art. <laughs> it is, but, but there's there's also the thing with with baseball. You've got one of the things I love about it is that you've got all different interests in it. Some people are interested in the pitchers. Some people are interested in the hitters. Some people are interested in the the say metrics. Some people are interested in the the food or whatever. There's something for everybody. Maths. Uh, the logo design, you know, there's all sorts of areas with baseball that you can get into and there'll be something for everybody you can enjoy. I think that's one of the most beautiful things about it. Is it's, mm -hmm. it's, there's almost no limit to it. Whoever you are, there's something that will take your fancy. And all baseball fans right. are different. You know, you talk to some guys and are completely into the stats. And then you talk to some people like me. I don't know much about the stats at all, but I care about the actual game, the ballparks and the atmosphere. Right. Yeah. So, well, one, no, go ahead. Um, so, yeah, like... I think even like the experience you can get, like if you like, if you like it to be, you know, oh, I just want to watch the game and take it in. You know, there there are baseball cultures like, like frankly, let's be real, a lot of American teams don't have super raucous fans, and then no. you go to like Latin American countries or like uh, like Taiwan. We saw in the World yep. Baseball Classic just absolutely losing their minds. Like if that's what you want, then you can find that too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's it's again. It reflects the culture. It reflects where you're from. It reflects the point of baseball to you. I do have one question for you, Andy, because 
Um, on this, on our podcast, we try and do a lot of stuff about international baseball, although sometimes we get caught up talking about the Phillies. Um, right. yeah. But but right. in regards to international baseball, I always want to know, and obviously you're like the perfect person to ask, where do you think baseball is on the rise? You know, we talked about Mexico and Korea yeah. and, and Taiwan yeah. and Japan and all these countries yeah. are well-established. Where have you gone that you said this country is going to go baseball crazy soon? Yeah, well, look, Team GB, I think the way they're performing, the way they're doing it, Massively on the rise. Mexico, I think, has always been a great baseballing nation, or especially here in the north of Mexico. But I think the the impact of the uh, the uh, WBC success really helps. Um, but then, like I said, like in the Middle East, we've got Baseball United starting up over there. The Pakistani baseball team coming along. Argentinian baseball. That's the beauty of baseball. It keeps spreading. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One thing I noticed about Team Great Britain, and I'm sure you saw this too, since. This is probably the sort of thing you have an eye for, you know, you're out there painting these guys. Uh, I felt like Team Great Britain developed like a really distinct culture in their team, like really quick. Like these are guys who most of them are from, you know, the Bahamas and like, Mm -hmm. I think, is there anybody from Barbados? Mm, I think it was the Bahamas in the U.S. a lot. Yeah. Okay. yeah, Yeah. So like. Like a lot of these guys, if you know, they probably don't have much of a direct connection to Great right. Britain, but they go out there and they start playing for the team. And next thing you know, like my personal favorite was the Harry Ford T celebration yeah, 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 when he, yeah. it, he would slide at the second base and then give it the old. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and the they had like their home run celebration down. Yeah. You know, like all of this stuff just emerged that fast, and I you, I really like you know, that part about them. That was one of the most amazing things. I remember being sat in on the team meeting. I, you know, Drew invited me along to the team meeting. So they'd be all sat there in a room and everyone would go around the room talking about their story and their link to Great Britain. And the, the way, you know, they might have been, you know, it might have been their grandmother or their mum or whatever else. They may have never have been to, you know, to London or, or wherever. But mm-hmm. the way they talked about what it meant to them and how quickly the team bonded and forced the link was incredible. Like, I couldn't believe how oh, it was. And it was the power of, like, the way that Drew pumped them up and, and, and talked to them and respected them and the way mm-hmm. they respected each other. And, again, it was the – it's incredible to me how these guys – I was like, how long do you know him? How long do you, have you played together? Oh, I, we met on the plane on the way over, and I met him in Dallas Airport when we made our connection. And I'm like, wow, like, it's like they've known each other for years. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's the chemistry. That's the amazing thing. And again, that was when, when I'm embedded with the team. That's what I want to capture like that. The way they hang out and the way they they relate to each other and so quickly they're, they're a team. It's it's incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was well, something that I, I felt like I noticed it about Great Britain in particular. Yeah. So I, I yeah. definitely had been... I had been keeping that one on my mind because I wanted to run yeah, yeah, by yeah. you so, while we had an yeah, expert no, on the team. Definitely. You know? Definitely. Yeah. Well, Andy, you've been more than gracious. We've taken up like two hours of your night, and uh, and I, we're just some schmucks that don't know anything about art. So thank you for right. enlightening us. But <laughs> this really has been this has been super insightful, super educational, and and I I really appreciate your time. If you're willing, let's just do another episode because I have so many more questions that I want to do or Any, that I want to ask. Anytime, anytime yeah, this, we can we can do it. Uh, this has been great. Right. Thanks I, I very know. much. And if, if if I can, can I quickly plug my website? I was about to say, oh, plug my absolutely, website. lovely. Yeah, yeah. Go so, ahead, plug, plug away. Andy Brown is a stadium. Andy Brown, no, Andy Brown, Andy Brown Stadiums dot com. That's the place where you can get my original artwork. You can get prints of some pieces. You can buy books. You can buy all sorts of stuff over there. My Patreon. I really need the help of people who like my work. So many people like my work, and I, I appreciate it. I love the fact that people like my work, but retweeting my work, sharing my work, getting to my Patreon. Andy Brown is an artist on Patreon um please like if you can help me continue what i'm doing then please help me because it is uh it's all self-funded and it's all it's all about the sales it's all about that sort of thing so if you can help me with a pop, cup of coffee a month that'd be great that's on andy brown um andy brown's an artist on patreon instagram the same twitter the same mandy b is an artist so yeah you can find me all over the place but please get in touch and uh share my work and i really appreciate you know the the chance being here tonight and talk to you guys it really it's been great yeah, thank, thank you. you so much, yeah. Andy. This has been so much fun, and I really have learned so much about art because I didn't know right. anything to begin with. So, yeah, I feel thank, like we kind of took it. an there art class on air. There you, you know? go. Exactly. There you exactly. Go. That's it. Well, well next time man, I'm talking to you, you're going to be paying abstract art. Oh, no. I was a little about to say, I'm going to call yeah. up and apologize about Don Quixote all those years ago. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There so, you go. thank you. Thank you. Really, Andy, this has been so much fun. Appreciate let's, it. Let's do it again. And um, yeah, well, I wanted to ask really fast is there a way people could do like a one time donation or anything, like PayPal or something? 
There is. I guess to my uh, to my um, email address on PayPal, which is Andy Brown is an artist at gmail.com. But you know cool. what? Maybe I should set up that button on my website too. But yeah, please. Yeah. Anything right. like that. So much appreciated. Yeah, just because yeah, I just figured. Yeah. Alternatively, I mean, you could make a one-time donation by purchasing one of his uh, one of his many artworks. Yeah, that's you know, maybe well. maybe a nice a nice Regensburg original. Yeah, All maybe absolutely. Yeah. yeah, well, Andy, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on. And sorry, sorry, Cheers, we killed guys. the battery on your phone. Yeah, no, it's an absolute absolute pleasure. My battery is nothing compared to what you two mean to me. Uh, oh, wow. thank you. You're not just a pretty oh. face, Andy. All right, oh, thanks, yeah, thanks, thanks again, try. man. Let's Cheers, let's guys. do another episode. All right, be safe. Take care. Hey, we'll see you again soon. Thanks. Cheers. Andy, thanks so much for coming on the show. This was so much fun to learn about what Andy does and also painting and art in general and his experiences with baseball. And Tom, right. I feel all the better for having done this episode with Andy. Yeah, I feel like... Um, I'm a better man. Like this, <laughs> this is a level, of, uh, a level of appreciation for baseball that I don't know that I was really in touch with before. Like... I could appreciate, you know, the unique things about like a stadium or about, you know, like a venue, because it's more than just stadiums that baseball's played in, you know, even like a field. But, you know, I feel like I would have been hard pressed to express it the way that Andy does. Like Andy sits there and talks about light and he's talking about Regensburg and he's like, you know, it's 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 dark. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? It, it was a little dark. I never wasn't noticed it? I'm like, that. I'm yeah. like, he nailed it. I'm like, yeah. And he he says these things about these parks and like some of them I'm not super familiar with, like the Toros Park. I'm not you know familiar with on like an instant recall level. But like Regensburg, I remember it because that that Czech qualifier game is just burned in my memory. And yeah. everything he says about it, I'm like, it like it feels like I'm a moron for not thinking of it myself. You know, like, oh, yeah, that, wait. Yeah, you're right. Like it, it was a little bit dark there. Or, you know, like he, he talked about how, like, it looks like they, they build it out of, like, the materials from the the environment around it, like, the color. And I was like, you're right again? <laughs> the yeah. man can't be stopped. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what it is? You know what it is? He knows about art, and we do not. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's, and, and I just want to say, Andy was not just a super nice guy in general to talk to, but... I don't know about you, but I definitely feel like I exposed my own ignorance today because oh, yeah. I just know nothing about art. And and I've always been happy with that. Like, I've always been like, I don't want to go to the art museum. I look at it and it's cool and then I leave. But now I feel and I, I still think I am that way. Like, I'm not you know, what I mean, I'm not into like Dalai right. and Picasso and stuff. But now I do feel like I have a little bit more of an appreciation for like, you know, maybe these guys don't. Well, maybe they're onto something with art, with with their art, even if it's not my kind of thing, you know. Well, I think what it comes down to, and this is what it comes down to for me, is that art of things that I don't have any connection to is a lot more difficult for me to like really want to pay attention to. Like, yes, like I didn't take a full like art history course when I was in college, but we part of like our freshman seminar, quote unquote, at like art history stuff. And we would look at the same painting for like an entire class. And we're sitting there, we're just going over it. And it's something that I'm like, not really that interested in, you know, it's like, you know, farm life in 1800s yeah. Corsica. And like, it's just, you know, I'm like trying to stay awake yeah so i'm not connecting with it all i'm like yeah whatever no yeah i definitely appreciated the you know the color balance but like with baseball you know th this is all like observations and like experiences that i'm familiar with so i look at it and when when it starts to come out of the painting i'm like yeah no that's it that's what that is you know like when he focuses on for example like you know uh, what well, like again? You look at those Regensburg paintings. That's the one that's stuck in my mind right now. I'm like, yes, I remember watching that game, and it looked like that. Not, yeah. not specifically, but I'm getting the same experience out of it again. You know, I'm getting all the same feelings. You know, I know where I am. Yeah. So it it's so much easier, and I don't know if this goes for everybody, but at least for me, it's so much easier for me to connect to a piece of art like that when it's something that you know that I already have like an interest in and a connection with. So that, you know what, that, that's why tonight I learned a lot about art. 
No, I did. And you could tell, and he did say this, that he taught for, I think, 15 years, he said. Um, but yeah. like, you could tell he was a teacher because he was very good at explaining why everything was the way it was and not just going, well, I wanted to paint it that way. Right. Um, so, And he so, even he even gives you an idea of, like, where other people are at. Like, who was the, the other artist that you brought up? The guy who, who does, like, Greg the photo. Greg Grindler, yeah. Yeah, he, he starts talking about how he's, like, you know, one of the things that I think is really interesting about him is that he he's, he works so much with light. And I was like, I li- I was thinking the exact same yeah. thing. I was like, I never noticed anything about his paintings. I just went, oh, that looks like that Willie Mays picture that I know. Right. You know what I mean? But, but like, but I like never he just put, he just it. whipped that out. Yeah. Like it would be like you know it would be like literally like I mentioned that it ha- it has a lot in common with baseball like. It would be like if you were talking to Clayton Kershaw and he starts going off about like, well, you know, a dude like uh, like Ben Joyce, for example, and starts going off about being a fireballer, which Clayton Kershaw is not a fireballer anymore. It's right. like, okay, so th- this dude is so good at what he does that he even picks up on like how other people do it and could explain yeah. it. Like, maybe that's not what he does, but he knows what's going on over there like that easily. Yeah. Well, he was, he was, there are certain people like that in this world. And I don't, I don't know if we're really one of them, but like my I'm going to go ahead and say that we're not. Well, what if it's a bad thing? Then we could be. Um, Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I'll hear you out then. Well, like my dad was the type of person who sort of knew a lot about everything. And so like, I remember one time and this, this is like seared into my brain of we were driving across uh, like the Ben Franklin bridge. And okay. I lo- and I just kind of, I was like 16, and I just looked around and I was like, now how does this bridge stay up with all the cars driving across it? And he was like, well, actually, you know why? Like the reason it stays up is because you know they take the tension of the whatever and they put it. I don't even know. But my dad, like, he's not an engineer. You know what I mean? Like he does. He didn't yeah. build a bridge. He just like read about it and then he conveyed it to me, and it was very interesting. Right. It's and just I stuck in his head. Once, yeah. And I never once in my life went. I want to figure out how a bridge stays up. But but like the conversation went that way and I was into it because of the way he presented it. And like he wasn't boring. He was like he was good at explaining. Yeah. It. That was Andy. Like I never felt the need to look up why Picasso was like was a successful artist or anything or even why Andy Brown was a successful artist. I just looked at the piece of art, and made up my own mind about whether or not I liked it. But Andy was right. very good at explaining. Here's why this thing happened with this. Mm-hmm. painting, And that's something that I, I am not able to do just looking at a painting um so well, it, was, think, it was very interesting from that regard yeah it's a, it's a compelling you know presentation yeah that he was putting on and also another thing that it really has in common with baseball well, almost literally is he's painting these games as they're going on and you know for anybody who's ever played baseball anybody who's ever watched baseball you know like you know the, the status of the game is an ever-evolving thing Unless you're watching the Phillies last month, then you know they're going to go down four nothing in the first inning. Then it's ever devolving, right? Yeah, it's they're going to go down four nothing in the first inning, and then they're just that's how it's going to go. That's the game. Um, <laughs> but like you know, in je- like you could be watching a game, and in the first inning, you know, one team scores three runs, and you're like, oh no, the momentum is all there. That team's looking really good, and they can just fall apart for the rest of the game. I mean, you see that all the time against like aces where as soon as the ace settles in, it's just over, you know, like the Phillies did that with Scherzer last week. Uh, yeah. But yeah, like, like with his painting, you know, with what he's trying to capture may change halfway through the game. Yeah. All of a sudden it's a totally different ball game. And now you have to adjust on the fly, all that type of stuff. So, you know, it's a little weird to think about all the things that, that painting has in common with baseball, but, uh, you know, th- I think the way he he presents it, especially because he's passionate about both things, it just feels natural. You're like, yeah, no, they're they're almost the exact same thing. Like after you hear him talk about it, you hear him yeah. talk about technique, it's the same thing. Oh, well, this pitcher uses this grip to get this kind of spin because you know he wants to throw a twelve six curve as opposed to a you know r- r- standard curve. Right. I don't know what, what exactly you would call it, but you know. It's a lot of the same stuff. Yeah. Also, watching a little Bob Ross did not hurt yeah. because there were a couple of things that he brought up that I was like, you know I will what? Say, I, I recognize Andy, that from Bob Ross. <laughs> I'm, 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 I am disappointed in Andy. I didn't hear him say Thalo Blue once. That's true. Yeah, or Platinum White. Yeah, white. Yeah, yeah. White. Yeah. <laughs> I well, wonder you know, if Bob listen. Ross was big in uh, in England when he was brought up, but but 
this was knows? this was really fun to have Andy on. Um, yeah. Continuing, I, I want to have Andy on again and just go go into it again because there were so many more questions that I wanted to ask, but it's like midnight here and we should call yeah. it quits. And we were also taking up a lot of his time. Um, but I definitely want to have Andy on again if he's willing. But uh, coming up, continuing the English theme, the Commonwealth theme. Mm. Uh, I mentioned this last week. We're going to have Donovan Benoit on who pitched for Team Great Britain. Um, and it seems is a buddy of Andy. So we'll have to ask him yeah. that. Um, but yeah, so that's what to look forward to next. And um, yeah, I just want to say, uh, I hope anybody listening to this goes and checks out Andy's stuff because I didn't know that what he was saying that it's all self funded and he basically relies on selling paintings to be able to do it. So I think, right. uh, yeah, definitely go give him a follow and I'll put uh, all of his handles on his website and stuff in the description. Um, but yeah, like he said, you know, with patrons and everything, like I think it's really cool what he's doing and. And he's the type who's just said, you know what, I'm going to make a go of it. So he he needs help to do that. So I hope I hope Andy can get the help that he needs. But yeah, and you um, know what, go go grab a, a painting of your favorite ballpark. You know, maybe yeah. you're a fan of PNC Park. That's one of my personal favorites. What you know what what's what's stopping you? you exactly. Know? Why not? Go exactly, grab one. Yeah. Yeah, so go go check him out. Go follow him on Instagram and Twitter and everything. Um, and I'll put all the links down below. And Andy, once again, thank you for coming on. This was so much fun. Um, and I also just want to say really quick, really quick, um, Andy was very accommodating. I DM'd him out of nowhere, and he said, yeah, absolutely, I'll come on. And we came up with a date. It was supposed to be Tuesday. And then he hit me up uh, today, which is Monday, so a day before, and said, hey, I'm really, really sorry. The team I'm working with, uh, asked me if I could do this event with them. And I, and he was honest. He was like, I want to do it. So can we change the date? And I went, no problem. And he went tonight works if you want to do that. And I went tonight works. So we're doing it tonight yeah, instead of tomorrow. Night. And then we had a schedule for 10 30 cause he's in on the West coast and we're on the East coast. So we did it later our time. So I said 10 30 and he said, yeah, no problem. Let's do it. And at like nine 30, he DMS me and he's like, Hey man, sorry to bother you. Just wanted to let you know, uh, I'm heading out to the chiropractor. But so if I don't answer you right away, that's why. And I was like, huh? And I DM'd him. Okay. I was like, are you okay? Like, we don't have to do that. Like, we can postpone it. And he was like, nope, I'll be fine. And he showed up at 1030 and it was great. Yeah. So Andy you know, was he's playing punctual, hurt. you know? Yeah, a Andy was playing hurt. So Andy, thank you for coming on. I hope your <laughs> back feels better. And um, just thanks for a great chat and for the, all the info. It was, it was really, it was really awesome to be able to talk to you. Yeah. And, you know, there is one player who... I would say that Andy should consider painting. You know, it, it would be a... Uh, wait a minute, it, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now that we're talking about this player, I don't think Andy got to do either of the ballparks he's known for. I think the Marlins Stadium is obviously they're not playing yeah, the there. the old and one. I, I think, what did he say, 2019 he went around? I think the Braves yeah. weren't in Turner Field anymore. Man. Well, well, you know, I want to run this back, Okay because I was planning for this player to be a surprise because God knows we never discuss this man on the podcast. Yeah. There is one player who, uh, who I would say that uh, Andy should consider painting, you know? Um, and I would say that, you know, if you're looking for something that really stands out about this man, um, speaking of painting his uh, painted on Jersey. Yeah. And more I want to, to the suggest, point, I want to suggest, let's start like a GoFundMe to commission Andy yeah. to do a, a portrait of this a, man. A very forearm centric painting. Yeah. Of one specific player. And, and who's uh, that player, Tom? Little known fact about this player. His name is Dan and and you know what? That same man, that same player, the self same, he will see you on the next one.